a hand praise. Praise God for the anointing in this house. Praise God for each and every one of you in this place on this day. Let me pray for you. Our Father and our God, we praise you. We honor you. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house. Father God, we don't deserve it. We can't earn it. It's by your grace that we were able to get up this morning. So Father, for that alone, we say thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for giving us a second, third chance, fourth chance, unlimited chances to finally get it right. Now, Father, I come before your throne of grace just asking that you open the ear gate of these, your children, those who are watching online, those who are here on our campus. Father, I just pray that you would bless them, that you would touch them. You know why you summoned them here on this day? So, Father, as I decrease, may you increase. As I get out of your way, I pray that you will have your way. Now, Father, move in this place. Change lives. Save souls. Father God, as I decrease, may you increase. As we continue to move forward in the center of your will, join us now and let us teach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, praise God for you in this place. To our guests, we say welcome, welcome, welcome to Crossword Christian Church. To our first-time guests, you should have a blue outline here in the Haven next door in the court. If you're watching on the Internet, you can download this outline right there on your computer. This is a teaching tool that we use at Crossword. It does not replace or supplant your Bible. I just want you to go deeper in the Word after you hear the sermon on Sunday. Amen? Amen. I'm starting a new series called It's My Season. It's my season. How many of you believe that? It's my season. This is a selfish part of Christianity. God's not done with you. It's my season. Our topic today is I'm one worship away. Amen. Let's read scripture together. John 4, 24. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Read it again. Let me hear you. Mark 5, 9, and Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. Amen. You may be seated. That will preach. I'm one worship away. You are one worship away. One worship away from your breakthrough. One worship away. September is the month that we celebrate our anniversary. Crossword actually started in the month of August. We started August 20th, the year 2000. We had our first service in a Masonic temple in Riverside, California. Some people said that was of the devil, that what church goes into a Masonic temple? What type of church will start a church in a Masonic temple? Well, I looked at buildings. The buildings that we were looking at, they wanted 4000 a month. I went to the school district. The school district wanted 2900 a month. I went to the Masonic temple. They said $835 a month. I said, that's God in the name of Jesus. That's God. We had our first service in the Masonic Temple. And again, people criticized that. But my very first sermon, I talked about the need for worship. I shared with the first time guests and the members who were establishing Crossword that if we're going to grow as a church, if we're going to change our community, if we're going to be changed ourselves, we must know how to worship. We must have the freedom to worship, to worship God in season and out of season, to worship God no matter what we're going through. I find that today we don't like to worship God. We like to worship God just for an hour and a half, but worship is a lifestyle. Worship is who you are. Worship is what you should do. You can worship God in the privacy of your own home. You can worship God while you're driving in your car. We need to learn how to worship. That's what John 4.24 is talking about, that God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in what? Spirit 
and truth, spirit and in truth. That means that you have to be honest with God. That means you have to confront God with your issues or confront God with what you want him to bless you with. That means you have to be open and honest. Those who are anointed to God must worship him in spirit because God is spirit and in truth. Stop soft-shoeing it. Stop talking around the issue. God knows what you're going through. God knows what you're trying to hide. Just be honest with God and say, Lord, I need for you to help me. It's all in your worship. The problem we have with Christianity today, it's amazing to me that Christians are frustrated. Those who say they know Jesus, those who say they love Jesus, too many Christians are frustrated with their position in life. Too many Christians who should be holding up the bloodstained banner, Christians who should be telling other people how Jesus had changed their life, people are frustrated. They're frustrated with what they have, frustrated with what they don't have, frustrated with what they want. Frustrated with their marriage, frustrated with their children, frustrated that they can't have children, frustrated with their job, frustrated that they don't have a job. I'm talking about saved folks. I'm talking about Christian folks. Just frustrated. You were pulled out of the muck and the miry clay. You were pulled out of the world, but now we're frustrated when we are God's anointed, when we are God's favorite people. Once we have Christ in us, there's nothing this sin sick world can do to us. Then why is the body of Christ? frustrated, frustrated with everything, frustrated that you don't have money. Then you're frustrated that you do have money, frustrated that you don't have a house. Now you're frustrated that you have a house. Now you got to cut your own grass and pay your own water bill. You're praying for a house and now you get the house and you don't want to upkeep the house. We are just frustrated as children of God. God says time out for being frustrated. No more frustration. What if I told you that you're one worship away from a breakthrough? What if I told you that you're one worship away from your life being changed? What if I told you that you're one worship away from being healed? What if I told you that you're one worship away from having a strong mind? What if I told you that you're one worship away from getting that promotion? What if I told you that you're one worship away from seeing brand new things? What if I told you that you're just one Worship away from your life being made anew. God's not done with you. What if I told you that you're just one worship away? It's all in your worship. What if I told you that you're just one worship away? Stop beating up people and stop cursing out people. Stop beating yourself up. You're one worship away from your life being made new. One worship away from being happy. One worship away from being satisfied. One worship away from being content. If you're not content with you, nobody else is going to love you. One worship away from falling in love with yourself. One worship away from finally being all that God has called you to be. One worship away. What if I told you that you're just one worship away? That doesn't take a whole bunch of stuff, but just selling out to the cause of Christ. Just one worship. One worship away. Matter of fact, say I'm one worship away. Matter of fact, tell the person they say I'm one worship away. They don't believe you. Say, I'm one worship away. Get on their nerves. Say, I'm one worship away. You don't know me. I'm one worship in the court. Tell them, I'm one worship away. On the internet, tell them, I'm one worship away. If I hit you in the face with my elbow, that's because I'm worshiping. I'm going to get mine. I'm just one worship away. Don't mean to offend you, but if I jump up, I'm jumping up for the Lord. I'm one worship away. Tell somebody. Say it until it becomes your reality. Tell somebody, I'm one worship away. Come on, talk to them. I'm one worship away. I'm one worship away. I'm one worship away. One worship. 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 I'm one worship away. You got to get that in your spirit. I'm one worship away. God's going to hear my voice. God's going to hear me cry out. God is going to deliver me. I'm one worship away. Lord, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because in the gospel, there's freedom. In the gospel, there's deliverance. I'm not ashamed to let people know that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm one worship away. I can get my own party on. I can buy my own cake. I can light my own candle. I'm one worship away. Tired of being me tired of being miserable. I don't need anybody to make me happy. I'll make myself happy. I'm one worship away. I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to worship myself happy. I'm going to worship until I feel better. I'm one worship away.
Say I'm one worship away. One worship away. The problem is that we worship God on good days. And then we don't want to worship him on bad days. We worship God when we just want stuff. But we ought to worship God with Father, I don't want anything. I just stop by and tell you I love you. That's the lifestyle. We want to worship God when we want to get something from him. But I'm sharing with you that you have to learn how to worship God in season and out of season. Because you're not going to always have good days. You got to learn to worship him in season and out of season. In season and out of season. In season and out of season. I have a female dog who's in season twice a year. And I notice when she's out of season, she's just a regular dog. She walks around my backyard, just walking and eating and sleeping. That's her lifestyle when she's out of season. But I've noticed that when she's in season, she's a different type of dog. When she's in season, she becomes very popular in the community. When she's in season, the male dogs want to get to know her. When she's in season, she's in everybody's favor. I noticed that she no longer walks around the yard. She prances around the yard. She walks around the yard and yeah, I'm somebody. I can hear them calling my name. I am somebody. Out of season, in season. When she's in season, she's a totally different person. Well, I'm trying to get you to understand that you could be in season or out of season, but it's your season now. You are in season now. God wants to bless you now. God's going to bless this church now. God wants to bless you today, every day. Your season is now. In season all the time. When you trust in the Lord, God wants you to be in season. Say, I'm in season. Say it again. I'm in season. So what season are you in? Whatever season you are in, you need to give it to the Lord. Are you in a season of lack? Give it to the Lord. He'll turn that around. Are you in a season of loneliness? Give it to the Lord. He'll turn that around. What season are you in? See, I find that, that Christians tend to lie to themselves because we act like we have to oppress somebody. You don't have to lie to somebody. Just tell them the truth. Right now I'm going through. How about you part with me and pray for me? With two or three are gathered, there Jesus is in the midst. Stop trying to impress folks. What season are you in? Be honest with your season. Right now I'm in a season of frustration. Right now, I'm just not feeling that church stuff. Right now, see, God will honor the honest person. God is big enough to handle your frustration. God is big enough to handle your questions. Lord, why does good people, why do good people die when bad people seem to get a pass? Why does it, it's okay to question God's wisdom, but know that God loves you anyhow. So what season are you in? Are you in a season of happiness? Then share your happiness. Are you in a season of prosperity? Then share what God has blessed you with, and God will bless you with more. What season are you in? You need to know that no matter what season you are in, you need to worship God. Say, I need to worship God. Again, John 424, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. Your life won't change until you learn how to worship God. That's why I love this scripture here, Psalm 47, verse 1. Read it with me. Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. I like that. Clap your hands, all you people. And then shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. See, sometimes when you're going through, you just need to stand in your house and clap your hands. Let, 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 let me share this. I, I do this all the time. When I'm feeling a certain type of way, I turn off the music, no television, and I just start clapping my hands. Because the demons hate it when you start clapping your hands. Lord, no, it's not going to happen in this house. Clap your hands, all ye saints. Lord, I'm going to clap my way out of this. Lord, shout to the Lord in triumph. When you start clapping, it soothes your spirit. The demons flee off the ceilings, off the walls. Clap your hands, all ye saints. Shout to the Lord in triumph. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. The praise. Clap your hands, all ye saints. Clap your hands. See, I'm confused with church folks don't want to give God the praise. We're just too cool and too cute. We're too laid back. But I have noticed the same church folks will shout and clap their hands for their favorite sports team. It's football season. College football started yesterday. My team, USC, is going to run the table. 
That's not prophetic. I just made that up. <laughs> the NFL starts today. It's amazing how we'll celebrate sports teams, especially the Raiders fans. The Raiders fans will shout. They'll paint their faces. They will fight for a football team. They got a new stadium going up in Las Vegas. Roshan just told me that they're actually building a jail inside the stadium <laughs> for the Raiders fans. True. A jail. They're not going to arrest them at the stadium and then take them to the jail. They're going to arrest them at the stadium and put them in the jail in the stadium. For a sports team, we'll fight, we'll argue, we'll do everything for a sports team. Lakers fans, the same way. Love the Lakers. We'll shout for the Lakers. I got a confession to make. I'm now a Lakers fan. <laughs> L.A. Brown is here. I'm now a Lakers fan. I'm going to shout for the Lakers. We'll do it for a sports team, but we won't do it for the Lord. And just by, by, uh, on the sidebar, I was always a Lakers fan. I was a, a Magic and Kareem fan. I was a Kobe and Shaq fan. I just couldn't do Kobe, so that's why I banned it. But now, L.A. Brown! We get excited for something that doesn't have heaven and hell in the balance, excited for a sports team, but then we're ashamed to get excited for the Lord. God says, clap, all you saints. Shout with a voice of triumph. Clap the same way you clap for your sports team. Clap the same way you clap for your musicians. Clap. Clap to the Lord. Get a Lord and shout a triumph. Lord, I will make it. Lord, I have made it. Shout with the voice of triumph. God wants us to understand that it's about him and not about us. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands, all ye saints. I want you to know that you won't worship away from your life being changed. I'm speaking prophetically now. One worship away from your life being changed. God has blessed his church too much over the past 18 years for you not to be blessed. God's going to take this church to a whole new level. Yeah. God has blessed us to be a vibrant church yeah. in the United States yeah. when people don't realize that 7,000 churches close their doors every year in the United States. Yeah. 7,000 shut down. People don't understand the stress and strain when it comes to churches. We just had a pastor, pastor of a mega church in Chino Hills committed suicide. Married with three kids. Couldn't take the pressure. People don't understand what's going on with churches. So for God to bless us for 18 years, that means God is in this. And if he blesses us, he'll bless you when you give him the praise. He'll bless you when you give him the glory. He'll bless you in all your frustration when you let God know how much you appreciate him. If you bless the church, we'll turn the air conditioner on. That was cold for where's my team at with the AC on. God has blessed us. He will continue to bless us when we do right by him. Amen? Amen. He's the only one who can change you. He's the only one who can deliver you. He's the only one who can move you from lack to blessedness. There's a story in Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 9. I want to share this with you. It's a good story. I just want to take my time and break this down. I want to show you how Jesus loves individuals. He loves you as an individual. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 9. It's on your outline. You can follow along in your Bible. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to talk about this. But I want you to understand, you are important to God, and you are literally one worship away from your breakthrough. Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through 9. It reads as thus. They came to the other side of the sea. They, the disciples, Jesus, came to the other side of the sea to the country of Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Verse 3, he lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Verse 5, night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, 
he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. Verse 6, and when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying with a loud voice, he said, what do you have to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. Verse 8, for he, talking about Jesus, Jesus was saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, for we are what? We are. Are many. Let me give you the backdrop. Jesus had already chosen his disciples. He'd already turned water into wine. He went around Jerusalem choosing his disciples. The disciples are with him. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus is walking around speaking in parables. His name was growing large. People started to follow Jesus. So Jesus goes down by the sea, near the Sea of Galilee in, in chapter 5. He's standing on the sea. And he's preaching, he's teaching, and people are coming. People are coming, and they are wanting to get saved. And so many people came out that Jesus couldn't stand on the beach anymore. So many people came out that Jesus had to stand on a boat. So he went and stood on the boat on the Sea of Galilee. Now, mind you, he didn't have to stand in the boat. Jesus could have stood on the water, but it was way too early for that. He didn't want to confuse the people. So he's teaching from this boat. And the disciples, they're feeling it. They, they were selected by Jesus. Now all these people are following. They say, hey, we're following the right person. We're following the right man. All these people from the morning to the night, from the sun coming up to the sun going down, Jesus is teaching the multitudes. The Bible says that, we transition to chapter 5, the Bible says that Jesus said, you know what? Somebody needs me on the other side. I, I'm blessing the multitudes but somebody needs me on the other side. Let's go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. See, I want you to understand that Jesus will leave the multitudes yeah. to minister to you. Yeah. Jesus will leave the crowd to come and visit you in the privacy of your home. Jesus will leave the crowd to meet you where you are. Jesus will leave the crowd to minister to you no matter what you are going through. He loves you that much. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus and the disciples, they get on the boat. And start going across the Sea of Galilee. For you Bible scholars, if you're reading your Bible, you know that this is when the sea started to get rough. Jesus was tired. He had been teaching all day. He went down and laid down in the boat. He's sleeping, and the disciples start panicking. The winds are blowing. It's dark outside. The disciples go and shake Jesus and say, Lord, don't you know that we're perishing? Don't you care that we're about to perish? Now, people look at the Hollywood version of that scene, and people think that Jesus got up and looked at the clouds and looked at the wind and the rain, and with a great big Shakespearean voice, he said, I art thou God, and I commanded thee thou seed. No, that's Hollywood. I believe that Jesus was tired. He had been teaching all day. The disciples woke him up. I believe Jesus rolled over and said, I can't believe y'all what we up to. You need a little faith. Peace be still. That's all it took. He didn't get dramatic by saying, I'm, I'm tired. Peace be still. And the wind stopped. The waves calmed down. And I believe Jesus went back to bed, said, if y'all waking me up again, I'm going to banish you. All it takes is one word from the Lord to stop the waves from ruining your life. All it takes is one word. It doesn't have to be dramatic. All it has to be is one word. Peace, deliverance, saved, blessed. One word. All it takes is one word for Jesus Christ to change your life. Salvation, one word. Deliverance, one word. All it takes is one word for your life to be changed. But Jesus had an appointment on the other side. He goes over to this, the country of Gerasenes because it's this man who's living in a tomb, living by the mountainside around the tombs. How sick do you have to be to live in a graveyard? This man had lost his natural mind. How sick do you have to be to be in a graveyard? Nobody wanted to be around him. He was crazy. He was literally out of his mind. I mean, he was very crazy. He was real crazy. I mean, I'm talking about 
Crazy, crazy. I'm talking about nerky, nerky, crazy. I'm talking about cray, cray, crazy. I'm talking about Mo, Larry, and Curly, crazy. Crazy. Nobody wanted to be around him. He was living in the tombs by himself. Just crazy. All out of his natural mind. But Jesus knew that he could fix his mind. Jesus knew that he could change his life. I don't care how people look at you or what people think about you. I don't care what you're going through. Jesus has the power to fix it. Jesus will fix it. Jesus will fix it. This man is just crazy. He didn't have any control over it. He just losing his mind, lost his mind, walking around, his eyes budding out. Bing, 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 bing. Ricochet rabbit. Bing. You know, we're afraid of crazy people. Instead of just praying for them, we're afraid of them. If a crazy person walked in this church now and started walking down the aisle and said, bing, bing, you... Try to allow your Christianity to soothe the situation, but you'll pick up your purse and put it on the empty seat next to you. I hope he doesn't try to sit here. Jesus, help him. Help him. Come on now. This is real church here. Real talk. But Jesus didn't care of the state of the man. He knew that he could change the life of the man. So Jesus goes and talks to this man, and he had 2,000 demons. 2,000 demons. How can I say that? He says, because there was a legion in them. He said, who are you? He said, we're, we're, we're legion. The Roman soldiers, a legion was 6,000. So he could have 6,000. I believe he had 2,000 demons because this is a story where Jesus, when he cast out the demons, he sent the demons into a herd of pigs, and the pigs, there was 2,000 pigs, and they ran into the sea and were drowned. So he had at least 2,000 demons in him. How much sin do you have to do to have 2,000 demons in you? How much sin do you have to commit to have 2,000 demons in you? One demon can destroy your life. How much sin can you do to have 2,000 demons? How many drugs you have to do to have 2,000 demons? How many joints you have to smoke to have 2,000 demons? How many multiple sex partners you have to have to have 2,000 demons? How many favorite things you have to do to have 2,000 demons? How can you have 2,000 demons? How wretched are you? How torn up are you? How many murders do you have to commit to have 2,000 demons living in you? 2,000 demons that you can't get rid of. But Jesus said, I'm leaving the multitude I bless them all day. I'm going to go save the one. I'm going to go to the wilderness and save the one. Jesus said, I care about all people. So Jesus talks to the man. The man approaches Jesus. Look, look, look at, at what he says. Night and day, verse 5. Night and day, the tombs and the mountain, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. Don't miss this. Night and day. Among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying and cutting himself with stones. I believe when it says cutting himself with stones, I believe he was still living under the law. Follow what I'm saying. God gave the law to Moses on what? On the mountaintop on two tablets, two stones. So this man was cutting himself with the law. Cutting himself, trying to heal himself with broken pieces of stone. Cutting himself, trying to make himself feel better with the law. The law condemns. The law holds you in bondage. The law is old school. The law is the Old Testament. Jesus said, I came to give you life and give you more abundantly. That's why it's interesting It's verse 5 because 5 is the number of grace. Jesus came to the man and said, you no longer have to be under legalism. You no longer have to be under the law. You no longer have to be under the system. I I am over all things. I have come to release you. I have come to give you grace. I have come to allow you to move beyond your past. I have come so that you can live. He came and met the man right where he was at. The man kept trying to fix it. See, sometimes you try to fix it by just coming to church. If I come to church enough, 
it'll get fixed. If I serve enough, it'll get fixed. If I smile enough, it'll get fixed. If I pray enough, it'll get fixed. So you have to realize that only Jesus can do it. When you commit your life to him, not a facsimile of him, when you give your whole life over to Jesus, Jesus changes your life. Not anything else, not the songs, that sets the table. Not the preaching, that sets the table. It's only when you have Jesus in your heart. Not in your head, but in your heart. Time out for this playing church. This man had 2,000 demons and he was tired of just playing church. 2,000 demons. He has seen the world. He has done everything you can imagine. I don't care what your past is. I don't care how many people you have slept with. I don't care how many people you have robbed. I don't care how many joints you have smoked. I don't care how much alcohol you have drank. I don't care what you have done in the past. I don't care how many divorces you have gone through. I don't care what your past has been like when you give it over to the Lord. I always ask somebody who would be honest. If you give it over to the Lord, he'll take the stone out of your hand. Verse 6 says, and and when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. He ran to Jesus. He went to the cross. He went to the source of his strength. He went to the level of his soul. When he saw Jesus, he recognized Jesus. The demons didn't want him to recognize, but he knew it was a piece of him. They realized that he was still wrong. They realized that, that, that he couldn't fix it himself. He realized that I need something else. These 2,000 enemies in me, 2,000 demons are trying to restrict me. He realized that the only way I can make it in this world is to go run to Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you need to run to Jesus. This is your run to Jesus Sunday. This is your get out of jail free Sunday. This is your being made a new Sunday. This is you not playing church anymore and giving it over to Jesus. Give it over to the Lord. And crying out, verse 7, and crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I adjure you by God not to torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Jesus said, What's your name? My name is Legion. I want you to understand that Jesus wants to deliver you on this day. I I want you to look at the fact that Jesus is here today, that Jesus is in the world today, that Jesus is not a made-up myth or fantasy. I don't care what you're going through. Jesus can fix it. Jesus can fix it when you realize that it's all in your worship. You realize that It's one worship away. You're one worship away. This man with 2,000 demons, he realized that if I just give it to the Lord, that if I run to him and fall on my knees, I'm not trying to be cool. I'm not trying to be cute. I'm going to run to my Lord because I tried everything else. I tried sex and drinking. I tried hooking and crooking and stealing. I tried everything else. I'm going to run to Jesus. I don't know any Bible verses. I don't know this, that, and other. I don't know Old Testament or New Testament. I just know that I'm sick and I got to get this legion out of me. I know that I'm sick and I need a Savior. It doesn't make you a bad person to be sick. It makes you a silly person and not to want to be delivered. Makes you a silly person not to want to be set free. This man said, you know what? I'm tired of trying to fix myself. I'm going to trust Jesus. You're one worship away. 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 Hallelujah. One worship away. Lord, I love you. One worship away. I need you. One worship away. I appreciate you. One worship away. Help me, Lord. I'm one worship away. I need you, Lord. One worship away. I want you, Lord. One worship away. I can't do this by myself, Lord. One worship away. Lord, I need you to fix my mind. One worship away. Lord, I need for you to do something in my life. One worship away. Lord, I need you right now in this this place, I'm one worship away. I'm one worship away. I'm one worship away. I'm one worship away. Come on, preach with me. Preach with me. Preach with me. I'm one worship away. I'm one worship away. One worship away. One worship away. One worship away. Clap your hands, all you saints. Shout to the Lord in triumph. One worship away. One worship. Has anybody been delivered in this place? Has anybody been in the world before? 
one worship away. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for patience. Thank you, Lord, for a second chance. Thank you, Lord, for a third chance. I'm one worship away. It's in your worship. The demons can't stop your worship. The demons cannot stop your praise of God. I will praise you, Lord, in the city and in the field. The demons cannot stop you from giving God the glory. Over in the court, you better start worshiping God. You're too cool. Stand up in the court and worship God. Worship God. You don't have to be cray cray. You don't have to be nurky nurky. You don't have to be Mo Larry and Curly crazy. You give it all to the Lord. He will redeem the time. He will redeem the time. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. He will redeem the time. I don't care if you've been miserable for 30 years. The next 10 years could be the best years of your life if you run to Jesus and say, I need you. I'm tired of this stuff inside of me. This demon keeps pulling me toward people who are not healthy for me. The last husband I was, was with put his hands on me. Then I started dating somebody else, he put his hands on me. And then I thought this person was good, and he put his hands on me. That's because the demon inside of you keeps connecting you to the wrong person. Yeah, I'm still smoking. I'm still drinking. That's because that demon knows your flavor. There's some things that you won't do, but that demon knows exactly what gets your attention. We tend to date the same people over the years. You think about who you dated in high school, and now that you are an adult, they all had the same characteristics. They all had the basic same look because it's that demon that keeps drawing you to the wrong person. Ask the Lord to exercise you. Ask the Lord to pull out those demons and see you a man that will change your life. Men, ask that demon or tell that demon to get out of you. Ask the Lord to send you a woman who will love you for you. Am I talking to anybody right now? Real life, real church. Jesus loves you enough to come here for little old you. You. He brought you here on this Sunday for a reason. He wants you to not only praise him, he wants you to receive him. Jesus had compassion on one individual who was living in the graveyard, who was out of his natural mind, zero chance. He had a future and a hope. But Jesus delivered him. I don't know who I'm talking to, but Jesus will deliver you on this day. Time out for just coming to church. You need to be about the church. You are the church. When you come to the church, you bring the church to the church. Time out for missing God's best. God established us as a church for 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. 18 years. And, and you know the reason, I, I, I'm done, but let me share this with you. You know the reason why Crossword continues to grow? Because I love people. Sincerely, I, I, I love people. I know how I used to be. I know I was a roughneck. But God got a hold of me when I was young. So praise God, I didn't have to wait till I got 40. I was tired of, of the dancing and the drinking and the smoking. I was done by the time I was 23. I, I did hot and heavy. 18 to 23, that was enough. So I praise God, he didn't kill me while I was experiencing the world. Many of you had the same testimony. God is redeemer time. We thought that was fun. We thought hanging out was fun. We thought kicking it was fun. We thought doing the worldly things was fun, but there's more fun in Christ. Trust me now on this, there's more fun in Christ. There's more sincerity, more solitude. There's more relief in Christ. This is your day to stop playing games with Jesus and really give him your all. You don't have to know it all. You don't have to understand it all, but you know that you have a demon in you. That's not criticizing you. You know you have something in you that causes you to go left when you should go right. This is your day. It's a new season. 
It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is coming your way. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is coming your way. It's a new season. It's a new day. A brand new season. It's a new season. It's a new day. Sing that, Stacey. Fresh anointing. 